Well, we've got a lot of exciting stuff to cover today, so let's dive right in. Uh, we're going to be talking about basic R and data input today. So this is really kind of the fundamental nitty gritty foundation of R. Um, so basic, uh, again, we're going to be revisiting terminology a little bit and actually starting to play a little bit with code. And data input is bringing your work and your data sets into R. So how do we do that? How do we get started? Um, actually using our own data sources. Uh, so I'm on the website right now, materials and schedule page, and I'm on day two. Uh, so hopefully everyone can see the website here. I'm just going to click on these HTML slides. And you're, um, of course, welcome to follow along um, or, or download the PDF or HTML as well. OK. And so a lot of what we're going to be doing is pretty interactive. So I'm going to have my R session here as well. Um, and I might scrunch it down a little just so we can kind of go back and forth easily. I'll zoom in just a little bit here. Yeah, I think that is, so we're going to talk a little bit about file structure and, and uh, organization a little bit later today. I think either uh, one big RMD of your notes or one every day does make a lot of sense. So you kind of however um, makes sense to you. But I do think uh, we were discussing yesterday, just making sure you close R periodically and reopen it so you know oh, OK, I, I do have to reload the library, or I do have to uh, rerun this code. Um, I think that can be good practice. All right, um, so let's recap just a little bit what we discussed yesterday. So first off, reproducible science makes everyone's life easier. We heard lots of really great advice from Carrie and from Cliff about how to use our markdowns and how to basically follow best reproducible and repeatable science practices. And so. We're going to keep that as a theme throughout this class. You know, we want to enable you to do really good science and do really good science using R. So that's going to be uh, at the top of our minds. Um, the editor is for static code like scripts or R markdown documents. Um, and this is different from the console, which is where we're going to send code to run it. So if I jump back over uh, to R, in most of my RStudio arrangements, the editor is up top. I've got some kind of file that I've opened. I can write notes to myself here. And down in the console, I can just type in code. I'm not saving it, but I can run it immediately. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more just as we're doing stuff, how the, uh, the R markdown file is going to work. Uh, so the console can be used for quickly testing code. We saw how we used it to install packages um, or testing code on the fly. You're like, oh, I'm not quite sure if this is this is right. I just want to do something really quick. Um, it can be great for that, uh, but it doesn't save your code. Our code goes within what's called a chunk. So this is this uh, kind of lighter colored box for me. It's going to look gray for folks with a, uh, you know, the default color scheme. And the code goes inside there. And you'll notice there's that green play button that I can use to run the code. And uh, we saw that code chunks can be modified so they show up differently when we generate a report. So maybe you don't want the code output uh, or the code printed, you just want the output. You can do that by tweaking those uh, chunk settings a little bit. So there's so much that ArtStudio can do for you as far as generating those nice reports um, and so I encourage you to kind of explore that. Okay, so in the slides that we're going to talk through uh, and use to guide our interactive stuff today, uh, a command or uh, any kind of um, bits of code that we're doing or code chunk uh, is going to look like this on a slide. So it's going to have this kind of gray background. 
and you're going to see some code in a, a mono space font. It's a little bit different. Um, and usually we'll see some kind of output below. Um, and so uh, in here, it's still kind of that mono space font. Um, and we'll see uh, uh, oftentimes in our output, we have this uh, number printed. And so this is just indicating kind of an index of the output we're seeing. Uh, not uh, super, super important to remember now, but just knowing that the format on the slides is going to look like this. So in this example, I'm using a function called class, I'm giving it an argument, and I'm getting some output. Okay, so it's going to look like this for the remainder of the class. All right, um, and so I mentioned a little bit about these code chunks. Um, so if we want code to actually run, we do have to click that green play button. Uh, we can also run a single line using a keyboard shortcut. And so if you've got a Mac, you can do the command uh, return or Windows, you can do control return. And so if you want to be a power user with your key shortcuts, you can definitely do that. Um, but for the most part, I'm going to enter code inside my chunk. and I can either hit the play button here and get that answer, or if I wanna be fancy, use that shortcut, it sends it directly down. So if I'm really working fast, I don't have to use my mouse to go all the way over. All right, let's really get into it now. So first and foremost, R uh, was developed as a statistical software tool. R is a great calculator. You don't need to open the calculator app on your computer anymore. Uh, so let's kind of see how this works a little bit. So I can do simple addition, multiplication. I can do uh, exponents. So things like 2 plus 2. I can do 2 times 4. Um, and hit that shortcut and see the answers um, in the console here. Again, if I hit this play button, it's going to run the whole chunk, so I get multiple outputs at once. If I were to enter my code directly in the console, R inherently thinks I want to print it. So if I type in 2 plus 2. It's not really storing that information. It's saying, oh, OK, I, I, I know you want an answer immediately. I hit Enter, and I get a response. And hopefully everyone can see this. I know it's uh, probably kind of small. OK, so uh, I encourage you to play around a little bit. Um, so the, the operators that we use to do math are what we would think uh, they are pretty much. So we've got our addition, our subtraction, uh, division, and multiplication. Parentheses work the, much the same way they do in regular math. Uh, and we can use the caret or the double star to raise to an exponent. And uh, sometimes it's useful to find the remainder. So we can use the double percent sign to do that. So I don't use that super often, but sometimes it's useful for, for iterating uh, through software. You might encounter that. All right, more complicated examples. So let's practice a little bit. I'm going to create a new R chunk here. And remember, I can do that with this button up here. So let's say I want to do 2 plus 2 times 3 to the power of 2. I'm going to run this chunk, get an answer down below, and that matches what I got in, in the slide. So that's great. And uh, you can even use it to solve viral math problems. So you'll be the coolest among your friends. You, you know the answer to all of these. <laughs> All right, so let's take a minute uh, just practicing either typing inside a code chunk or even directly in your console. We'll try to evaluate some of the following. So I'm going to just get rid of this. 
So let's do two plus two times three divided by four. And here's something I want us to pay attention to. So you'll notice that uh, there's spaces here. And I've created spaces between my numbers in this code right here. If I look up at line 13, I didn't have any spaces. And so a lot of the time, R is not actually worried about spacing. There are some exceptions. Um, and so uh, we'll, we'll kind of talk about that throughout the class. But when I'm doing math, it really doesn't matter. It's nice to have kind of breathing room around your numbers so they're easier to read. And so here, uh, this is 4 minus 3, but it kind of looks like negative 3, right? So I'm going to put a space there so things look um, a little nicer. All right, so I can evaluate that. Um, and just go ahead and give it a try. Uh, enter one of these in your RStudio or your console and uh, just kind of prove to yourself that, that math and RStudio and, and R can kind of work together. OK. All right, so um, we've done some math, um, but we might want to create code inside our R chunk that is not actually evaluated. So let's talk for a moment about that and about commenting inside of R code. So we denote that with the pound sign or the hashtag uh, if you're um, if you're younger than like 25. Um, so uh, this right here is a comment. You'll notice it's kind of in italics. It's formatted a little bit differently. So you can have as many of these signs as you want. It's still going to be a comment. Um, and you can put comments on the right of code. They cannot be on the left, but they can be on the right uh, of code. So let's say I wanted to add a bit of a comment for myself. Um, I could say this is a math problem. And I've created a note, say, uh, evaluate this equation. OK, so I can create comments to myself this way. But in an RMD file, I can also create the notes up here. So that will also work. OK, so you may run into this or, or may prefer it for some of your work. All right, so we are really like after a couple of slides from now, we're going to be really frequently creating objects in R. And so remember, these are like our nouns that we're working on. Uh, so you can create objects within the R environment from files on your computer or from a collection of numbers you create. Um, but if we want to store something as an object that we can use later, we're going to have to use this uh, arrow sign to assign values uh, to an object name. So you might also see the equal sign used, but generally this is not best practice for the first order um, assignment. So let's take it down. We'll create one more chunk here. And let's say I want to create uh, or I want to store the value 2. And I want to assign it to uh, an object. So if I just enter 2 in the console, right, that doesn't get saved anywhere. But if I were to assign it the value x, I'm going to store it. So the kind of worrisome thing, I'm going to run this. It doesn't give me any output, but I do see now that that value is saved in my environment. OK, and if I want to print that value, I can take I'm just jumping down to the console. I'm going to type X and it remembers. OK, so it's stored in the memory of R. 
and I can do whatever I want with this. So I could say um, x times 4, right? It works just like uh, how you would do algebra. Um, or uh, x plus 2, you, you can imagine lots of options here. All right. Um, so uh, this was a pretty simple object that we created. x, it's just one value. Uh, but the most common type of object that most of us will be working with in our day-to-day -day work is a data frame. And so you can think of this as like, you know, what you'd open up in Excel or another spreadsheet software. It's got rows and columns. Usually rows are different subjects or observations and columns are different metrics or variables that you're measuring. Data frames are a bit complicated in R. Um, so we're going to start with simpler stuff. We're going to continue to work with um, values like the X that we just created and something called vectors, which we'll talk about in just a second. All right, so um, here, like I said, we're talking about these one dimensional objects um, and they're often referred to as vectors. And uh, vectors can have multiple observations. So you can store, you know, not just two, but you could store uh, several numbers. Um, but each observation has to be the same class. And so what do I mean by that? Um, for now, when I'm talking about an object class, usually it's either numeric type, so numbers, um, or it's a text um, or what we call a, a character type. Um, so let's kind of experiment with this uh, new function we're looking at here called class to check the class of an object. So we created this object x. Uh, so let's uh, check the class here. So uh, x is numeric, and that makes sense because uh, when I signed it up here, I gave it the value 2. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty straightforward. I feel good about that. Uh, but let's imagine we create a new object called hello world. It's just a, a string or set of uh, characters or letters. Uh, and you can usually tell this because it's going to have quotation marks. So something like hello. And let's check the class of y. All right, it's a character type. So uh, these, uh, this value x and this value y, they're different. OK, so for now, numeric uh, uh, class is going to be numbers. There's no quotation marks, just like I was saying. Um, and then they're going to show up in this kind of like dark red color. And character type is usually text with quotation marks. And by default on these slides, they're going to show up in green um, and, and have those quotation marks. OK, so we've learned some code, but let's take a moment to talk about some issues we might run into that might get a little frustrating. Uh, we want you to be ready for them. Sorry, Eva, just a question. Um, if you yeah. clear your environment, uh, you assign x to be 2 now. If you clear your environment, will R forget basically that x equals 2? Exactly. Um, so great. let me show uh, what happens. Let's say I uh, have closed out um, of, there we go. I was like, why is my window not expanding? Uh, so let's say I closed out, or I actually use this broom button to clear objects from the workspace. I uh, can see now it's gone from my environment. If I try to ask it uh, what, or try to type in why, it's going to say that it's not found. So um, if you are using objects that you've created, uh, you're going to want to make sure they're in your environment here on the right. All right. OK, so. Um, I did say that spacing was a little bit flexible in R. What is not flexible is the case. So if I created an object lowercase x, um, and let me rerun this chunk to reestablish it in my environment. If I type in uppercase x, 
it doesn't know what that is. It cannot be found. So make sure that your spelling and your case of your objects is what you expect. Uh, sometimes we've seen this where folks will copy over numbers into R and these commas linger. Uh, R doesn't know what to do with that. Commas usually are used to separate items in a, a list of items or a vector of items. Uh, so it interprets that differently from commas as we think of them. So whenever you're using numbers, make sure you uh, get rid of those commas. Okay, and this one is uh, can be eternally frustrating. So let's say we're, we're typing some code and I want to do uh, a number divided by something, but then I hit the return key a little too soon. Uh, you'll see instead of your side caret, uh, you will see this plus sign. And if I hit return, it keeps happening. R is reading that as an incomplete statement and it's, as, it's, it's wanting more information. So uh, if I get stuck doing this, I can hit the escape key uh, to bring back my caret. Yeah, it's exactly, it's yes and. <laughs> So I can hit the escape key and try once again to get an answer. Or if I do this and I have the plus, I'd be like, oh yeah, I, I forgot. I wanted to divide by 10. I can just enter that and, and hit enter, okay? So um, if you see lots of plus signs, uh, R has gotten something that is incomplete. So kind of scroll up a little and see what you didn't quite finish. Okay, so let's do a little bit of practice. So let's uh, try assigning your full name to an R object called name. So let's take a moment and create a little bit of code here. All right, so another R chunk. Um, so remember, I wanna use this arrow, left facing arrow here. Um, and I want it, the object to be called name. And I want to put that arrow there. And because names are with letters, I'm going to want quotation marks. All right, so I'll go ahead and run this. And you can see that uh, I didn't get any output in the console, but now I have a new value um, or a new object over in my environment. All right, so pretty straightforward. And you'll notice that I've done the object assignment on this first line. And the second line is actually printing it. R knows that if I just type in the name of an object that I would like to print it. So let me put name here, run that, and it will print it to the console here. And yours might print under this R chunk, that's okay too. Okay, the combine function. This is super essential. It's going to be used all the time. You're going to run into it all the time, so much so that you don't think of it even as a function anymore. It's just part of kind of putting your R code together. Uh, so the combine function collects or combines or joins single R objects into a vector of R objects. So taking the number two, and combining it with four or five, you know, a bunch of other numbers into a vector. And so it's usually used for creating vectors of number of character strings and other data types, maybe um, a vector of column names, for example. Uh, so let's kind of see how this works a little bit. So uh, let's say I want to create a vector with the combine function, just full of numbers. So let's use the numbers in the slide. Let's take the number one, separated by a comma for the next item, the next item, and then finally a fourth item, okay? And this C is on the outside, okay? So it's gonna combine one, four, six, and eight into X, okay? 
So I'll run that. And if I were to type in x into the console, it's telling me it's this, uh, this vector of numbers. It kind of prints them out. And uh, let's check out the class here of x. It's numeric. All of the items in this vector that I use the combine function to create, all of them are numeric. OK, so let's, again, do a little bit of practice. The combine function, uh, let's use it to create um, separate entities for our first and last name. So we're going to separate those character uh, strings into a single vector called name2. Sorry, Eva, could you give an example of why you would want to do this? why you would want to do this. So um, if I wanted multiple items together in R, I can't just uh, I can't just list them out like this. That's not going to work. So I have to, and you can even see that, right? So it's, uh, it's going to give me an error there. Um, so you can even think of the combined function as a way of just packaging up multiple items. Uh, so, sure, I mean, but like a, a example in maybe you're running some stats or um, like an analysis or something like that, why you'd want to do this? Yeah, so you can use them to provide column names for your data set. They can be, uh, because they are one dimensional, they would have to be like an individual column of your data set. Um, uh, let's see, I use them a lot for like creating color palettes, like putting together multiple color schemes. Um, and providing like multiple values for something like let's say um, you are filtering data and you can match any of three criteria or something like that you would have to combine them together uh, to do that yeah um yep so yeah great great uh great point we used them on the plot yesterday um but yeah, you'll see some examples throughout the class. It's uh, it's something that should hopefully become really second nature because it's just anytime multiple things are coming together. Um, yeah, good question. Um, all right, so let me get rid of this here. Um, and let's try uh, putting together that name too that we were talking about. So uh, we want another object here. And we're going to say, OK, well, um, I want two different elements. So I want Ava, and I want Hoffman. But I have to separate them by a comma. And I have to use the combine function. OK. And if I run that, it stores it. And you can see that. When I look over here in my environment and compare name and name to, uh, they do look a little different. They're not identical. OK, so uh, in name, it recognizes only one item. But in name two, it recognizes two items, a first and last name. OK. OK, so uh, hopefully this should be uh, pretty straightforward, just what we just did. OK, so we mentioned a little bit yesterday about arguments. These are the uh, instructions that you give to your function or your verb that you're working on. Um, the contents inside, they're called arguments. R is assuming that um, all of the arguments for this combined function should be objects contained inside this vector. So uh, in the example here, we've got a first argument, which is that character type um, object Ava, and then another one following. Um, we'll talk more about arguments as we go, but this is how we tell combine to work. We're giving it a couple things to combine, and that's how it knows what to create for name two.
All right, so uh, length is a handy function, does pretty much what we think it does. It gets the length of something. Uh, so it, uh, in cases where you're trying to look for, you know, how long your vector is, you could even uh, use it on um, data frames and other things that are uh, different types of objects. Um, you can use the length function to get that value. So if we were to say, all right, well, I want the length of X and run that, uh, I can learn, oh, okay, it's got four elements to it. Um, but if I were to do, say, the length of name, it's going to be one, right? There's only one character type uh, value in there. OK, so we gave a little bit of this away. Uh, but what do we expect for the, the length of name? It's one. But what about name two? What is what is the length of this object right here? Um, I want to see some ideas in the chat. And I'll give you a hint. It is less than three. <laughs> Amazing. Yes, it's two. All right. And you can tell kind of just looking at the commas. And obviously, this is a more simple um, object. But as we get into larger vectors, uh, you may not be able to count by hand. So length of name two uh, is two. Fantastic. OK, um, so you can perform functions to entire vectors of numbers very easily. So uh, let's say I wanted to add two to every element of x. So I could take x, add two, um, and we can see that two has been added. Um, to each of these, OK? All right, um, so we covered a ton just now. But first and foremost, we assign values to objects, uh, store it in our environment, into memory, with the left hand arrow. Uh, remember, the new name that you're giving something goes on the left. And the value you're assigning it to goes on the right. The class functions tells you what the class or what kind of object it is. For the most part, we're dealing with numeric or character type. Um, use the combine function. So that's just a C with the parentheses uh, to combine text, numbers, et cetera, into a vector. And uh, finally, length can be really useful for determining the number of elements you have. Um, all right, so I think um, we'll jump into our lab really quickly here and then um, have a bit of a break. So we'll take uh, around 15 minutes or so, uh, maybe a little bit longer to work on this interactively. Um, actually, let me. Share screen again. Um, so the lab, you can use this link here. Or if you go to the main site and materials and schedule, the lab is also um, right here. OK. All right, so let's jump back into the uh, lecture. Good stuff here. All right. And moving Zoom stuff around. Great. OK, so um, we saw in the lab that we worked with character class data and numeric class data. Uh, so it may come as no surprise that we can't do mathematical operations on text. So if we have something like name two or um, one of our, um, you know, uh, our, our character types that we created in the lab, uh, let's see if we still have name two. Yep. Uh, if we take name two and we try to do some math on it, um, it's going to give me this very confusing and not helpful error, right? 
uh maybe a little bit helpful not i don't know uh but it gives us an error right it says you can't do that uh so you'll get something like this if you try to perform some kind of uh you know let's say you're trying to take the mean of some data but it's actually a character type this does come uh back to get us if our data is not in the right format okay so uh let's uh save uh, a modified vector. So anytime we create something new, uh, you know, we have an intermediate object and then we want to create something additional, we'll assign it as a new, um, a new object. So uh, in this example, we're taking uh, the object X that we created and we're adding another vector to it. And uh, we want to save that as a different name. We don't want to overwrite it. Um, but important to know that if we do uh, use an object name a second time, R recognizes the most recent one you ran. So uh, if you remember early on in the lecture, we made a, um, a object Y. Um, if I do something like Y is X plus one, two, three, four, um, and I try to do Y again, uh, hello has disappeared. Okay, so always something to be careful about. Uh, you can end up doing something like uh, this, where for let's say x is equal to x plus some values here. If I were to run this, then that original x is overwritten and I can't do it again because uh, I've overwritten the value that I used. It's, it does feel a little circular. Um, so it is important to use new names for things um, if you don't want to lose them. Okay, um, so you like just what I was saying. So uh, you can use that reassignment to allow you to make changes in place. So uh, let's say um, I, wanted to take x and I just said okay I don't really care about what x is anymore um, I'm going to uh, multiply all of them by 10 and look at x and I can see all those values have been multiplied but watch what happens if I run uh, let's put x down here if I run this multiple times, you can see it's quickly adding up, right? And uh, I've lost the original value of x, okay? And so if you don't want things to change, use a new name. All right, so uh, we talked about the class function, but the function str or structure gives you the structure of an object. So it tells you a little bit more information. Um, so if I were to say, all right, uh, I want the str of x, um, it tells me, oh, OK, um, it's a numeric class or type. Um, it has values or ob um, items one through four. So I've got only four elements in there. Um, and then it gives me a preview of what those values are. And you can actually see this over here in my environment, right? So I know that name two is a character type. There's one through two of them. Uh, and my num is a numeric type. It's got one through six elements. Um, so str can be a handy function for just learning a little bit about a, 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 an object. OK, so uh, again, we're working with really simple objects here. You know, they're only like two to six uh, elements long. But if we're dealing with something very, very large um, and we want to get a little bit more information without having to look at the whole thing, or maybe we can't look at the whole thing, these functions come uh, in much more use. All right. Uh, so we're going to head back to the lab, a little bit more uh, interactive stuff, and uh, then we'll switch gears and talk a little bit about data import. So uh, let's go ahead and jump back into those rooms.
Okay, so we saw a lot of like kind of fun combining of vectors and, and using that combined function pretty liberally to, to get stuff done. Um, but we also have a couple of other functions that might help us make bigger vectors and, and uh, bigger sets of data. Um, and you may not use these all the time in your own work. Again, we're going to be working a lot with data frames, uh, but these are really useful functions uh, to just have uh, and to use to practice our uh, fundamentals. Okay. Um, so let me go back to R here and go back over here. And we'll make another chunk. All right. So uh, useful functions to create vectors, this seek function. Uh, it's really useful both for uh, numeric types or numbers and uh, and uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about this in a bit, but there's uh, a couple of different classes of number uh, types in R. Uh, so really useful for both of those. So it's got a couple of arguments that you can specify. So you can really tell it all kinds of things. Uh, you've got the from argument, which says, all right, well, I want you to start a sequence at this number. Uh, you've got the to argument, which says, what number not to go above? Just stop at 10. The by argument says how much you want to increment by. Um, or, so you can either have uh, by or length out. Uh, the length out argument says how long it should be. So it kind of figures out the increment based on the length of the vector that you want. Okay. Um, so let's say uh, we want to do a sequence uh, from zero. We want to go to 100 and we want to go by five. And let's see what that happens or what goes there. Okay. So uh, the from and the two are inclusive. So you'll see I have the zero and the 100 up here um, and it's gone by fives. Okay. Um, and uh, I can also, like I said, use that length out. Well, let's say I only want five. It can give me that sequence as well. Okay. And so what's produced here is a vector, right? So it works exactly the same way as some of these vectors we created uh, above or in the lab. Okay, uh, again, getting a little bit more in the weeds. Uh, so this uh, additional function called rep uh, is going to create, be able to create repeated uh, or very long vectors by repeating uh, information. So uh, it creates character and numeric vectors. So you can repeat a specific word over and over again. Um, and it's got a couple different options. Uh, so the each argument specifies how many of each item you want repeated. Um, and the times argument specifies how many times you want something repeated. So you can also supply uh, really anything in the what to repeat part of the, uh, of the function. And then the additional arguments come next. So um, let's kind of see how this works in practice. Uh, let's just go down here a little bit. Uh, so I've got rep, and let's uh, let's use that vector that I created before. Let's use name two, um, and let's say I want to do each one uh, ten times. Okay, so what happens here? So I've effectively taken a vector that was two elements long, and now it's uh, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. It's twenty long, right? Um, and these numbers here, I mentioned before that they're an index. It's really meant to help you keep track of where you are at on a vector. Okay. Um, so let's say I do uh, times and try that. So it says, uh, it takes this and it repeats the whole thing 10 times. So it works a little bit differently. Uh, so it's one, two, three, and so on. Uh, and I can combine them as well. So uh, if I wanted to do each twice and then 10 times, 
uh, it will look something like that. So I can use both. Okay. And uh, this works um, with uh, both numeric types and character types. So if I had something like y uh, and ran that, um, I get a whole bunch of numbers really quick. All right. All right, so uh, here's where we're getting pretty wild. Uh, we can create numeric vectors using the sample function. And so this takes a uh, random sequence of values. And so this can be useful for kind of testing things out um, or uh, imputing some, some example data. Um, and so you can uh, kind of play around with this as part of your project too, if you need to. Um, so the uh, X argument specifies what we are taking our sample from. The size argument specifies how many values there should be. And the replace argument specifies if values should be replaced or not. So if we think about, go back to uh, days of learning statistics, you have a, a cup or, or something you're drawing marbles out of. Do you uh, put the marble back and then sample again, basically? Uh, do you, are you able to sample that same thing a second time? Okay, so let's uh, take this um, value that I uh, created here or up here maybe. Um, let's go ahead and save this as um, my seek. And let's uh, make the length out nice and long. So I'm going to get rid of this and just run this here. So if I take a look at my seek, um, I have a, quite a, um, a lot of numbers in here. OK. All right, so let's go ahead and sample this. So we want to sample my seek. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, so it's not exactly uh, going to be like it when it's fitting the number of uh, samples within two bounds. It's not precisely um, going to like fit within that. But if I wanted to make precise uh, um, increments I could do by and say, all right, I want uh, 0.5, for example. So if I run that and take a look at my seek, yeah, so that's going to uh, look a little bit maybe more what we expect. Um, so you can. Um, so what what normally we might do is take this vector and use a function called round and take it to a certain decimal point. So let's uh yeah let's take the nicer looking one. Um, yeah okay so uh, sample my seek. Um, let's do a sample of uh, ten numbers and. If we go back, we have this option to do replacement, right? So let's say um, I want to take a random sample. I don't care if I resample. So let's do replace is equal to true, OK? And notice this is all, all caps here. If I were to do this, uh, it thinks, oh, that's an object, OK? So just be careful of that. Make sure that's in all caps. You should see it be orange or a different color, just like a number, because it's uh, what's called a logical type. We'll talk about that uh, more in a bit. OK. All right, so looks like a nice random sample that I might be able to use for something. All right, so we covered a lot of ground. Uh, so first and foremost, R can function as a calculator, right? You can do math in it uh, using those, um, those operators, plus, minus, divide. Use the left-facing arrow to save or assign values 
two objects. So it's like you're saving them in memory for use later. Use the combine function to combine values into vectors. The length, class, and structure function tell us information about an object, help us understand it a little bit better. So tell us how long it is, what kind of values it has, what do they look like? Are they uh, text? Are they numbers? The seek function helps us create numeric vectors. So we can go from, to, by, and, and kind of have it customized in lots of different ways. Um, and the uh, rep function helps us create vectors with each and times and kind of multiply depending on, on what we want there. And then finally, sample can make random vectors. So if we want uh, a sampling of random numbers, uh, we can do that as well. <laughs>